Hello everyone and welcome to my Walt Disney World dining video. We're going to be talking all about snagging your ADRs, also known as your advanced dining reservations. I have got some of my best tips and advice to pass on to you today as I had my own 60 day dining day last week and I learned a lot. <laughs> I managed to secure some really great reservations and I'm really excited to share everything that I learned onto you. So if you have a trip coming up, now is the perfect time to subscribe to my channel so if you're new around here hello I'm Brogan and I make home lifestyle travel and of course Disney vlogs I actually got the opportunity to go out to Walt Disney World in May this year with the Disney Parks UK press team which was absolutely incredible what an opportunity I had such a great time that the minute I came home I immediately wanted to make sure that we could do it again but with my fiance Benji so we're gonna be staying at Pop Century we're gonna be vlogging everything so do keep an eye out for those videos and in the meanwhile in the lead up to the trip I've been covering everything to do with planning and organizing and I did a whole video on everything you need to know for booking a trip and in that video I also showed you my planning spreadsheet and how I organize our trips so you might want to watch that first because you kind of need a rough schedule and idea of what you are doing each day before you book your dining although having said that some people book their dining and then they book the rest of their schedule around their meals which is absolutely fine as well whatever works for you but for for me, I knew that, for example, we wanted to go and see Cirque du Soleil, which is going to be amazing in Disney Springs, and I knew that the restaurant I wanted to go for dinner beforehand was homecoming, so I had a very specific day and time that I needed for that, if that makes sense. Uh, but of course, I'm going to be covering everything that you need to know, so do leave below your favourite Disney res recommendations for restaurants, just in case there's any that I need to go and check out, even if it's quick service, and also people love reading the comments, so do share everything, including your countdowns. I love to chat to you all about Disney stuff. So let's get started. Um, like I said, we are going in December and I managed to get us Chef Art Smith's Homecoming, like I said, Steakhouse 71 for breakfast, Space 220 Lounge for lunch, Topolino's Terrace Character Breakfast, Tepan Edo Dinner, and Ohana dinner. So we have a nice mix. I didn't want too many reservations in. We're not on any kind of dining plan. We don't have any dining credit. So we're doing this very differently. And I've planned it so that these meals will give us time to have a break from the parks, a leisurely start, or are just meals that we really, really, really wanted to do. So I'm really excited about it. When I was doing my research, I did write down the hardest ones to get. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of my past favorites that I'm not doing this time, but I think are really worth it if you've not done it before. So stay tuned to the end for my personal favorites and ones that I've done recently. But typically the hardest to get is Be Our Guest, Cinderella's Royal Table, Chef Mickey's, Victoria and Albert's, Topolino Terrace, Ohana for dinner and breakfast, I think it's quite hard to get. Ogre's Cantina and Space 220. And I would also argue on that list, I would put Sci-Fi Dining Theatre and also Storybook Dining at Artist Point has become quite popular for a character meal. Garden Grill could also be quite popular to get, um, but they're the ones that come up the most, I'd say, and are typically the harder ones. And so if you've booked a trip, you wanna maximize it, you want to do those incredible dining experiences, then you want to be savvy and know how to do it. When it does come to your 60 days, you are gonna to want to not only be prepared, but you need to be there with like on the dot, there is no messing around. Trying to get Disney dining is like trying to get tickets to see Harry Styles. You don't have any sort of queue system. It's first come, first serve, and you need to be ready. So I'm gonna tell you what you need to know. So first up, my biggest and best piece of advice, if you haven't booked your trip yet, or if you're like not sure whether it's worth it, is to stay at a Disney hotel. When you are a Disney resort guest, you get a really underrated perk that not many people seem to talk about, but it's the ability to not only book in advance, everyone gets to book 60 days in advance. It used to be 180, that's changed, it's now 60. But you get the chance where regular guests can only book one day at a time. So at day 60, they can book their first day, day 59, their second, and so on. A Disney resort, guest, hotel guest, gets to book up to the first 10 days of their trip. So most UK guests stay for around two weeks, so you can book the majority of your trip 
all in one go and this is a major major perk it can be the make or break between getting those really hard reservations we're going to come back to that again later but keep that in mind because i was able to book the first 10 days in one go do your research and prep for me planning a walt disney world trip is actually a big part of the experience and the excitement and i think it's why i love my trip so much i feel the same about when i go on a cruise too i love looking at all the shore experiences which destinations we're going to which restaurants they have and it's the same for disney i love researching what restaurants are coming up what the menus are like but i think if you can do your research, sit down with your party or your family members and establish what's important for everyone. What do you want to do as a family? What experiences are important? One year for me, it was about loads of characters. Then one year I wanted to eat inside the Cinderella's castle, Cinderella Royal Table. You know, you have to establish which ones um, are going to fit for you. If you have kids, for example, I remember when I was a kid, my mum always took us to the Rainforest Cafe. I have very strong memories of that. Even though the food wasn't all that great, I know that she took us there because we loved it so do think about that and if you can and you have the time watch some vlogs see what people like what does the food actually look like rather than on a photo the vlogs share it all my favorite youtube channel is definitely disney food blog i think dfb guide do the best reviews they make everything so clear and uh, that's where i get most of my knowledge from is their youtube channel but hopefully you can earn a tip or two here but in terms of like your planning and getting prepared that is gonna massively help you and also one conversation that does need to be had is what is your budget for dining disney food and eating in the parks is really expensive but you can share meals you can have children's meals you can eat quick service you don't have to have sit down dining reservations but if you are going to then do remember that there is tipping and tax on top and everything will feel a lot more expensive than a typical meal you'd have at home some character meals can be upward of around a hundred dollars for two people so maybe keep that in mind what is your budget and how many dining reservations would you like in because for us i didn't want too many but i know that this trip is going to be one that we um don't do again for probably another few years so really want to maximize it and it was a conversation that benj and i had to sit down and have together so that leads me nicely onto my next point which is check the menus maybe you've heard that a restaurant is really great for the experience or the food or the view or your neighbor jill told you you need to go there but if you don't like the menu and there's nothing on there that appeals to you then maybe it's not going to be right for you good example of this is my friend adam told me that skipper's canteen is amazing i showed benji the menu he doesn't eat a lot of seafood and it was majority fish dishes and we both agreed that there was an awful lot that we loved on it so although that might be an amazing meal for someone else it just didn't work for us and that's why checking the menus is sometimes crucial we also did the same with space 220 we looked at the main menu and we also looked at the lounge and we decided that the experience of going into the restaurant was more important to us and we were happy with a light lunch lounge <laughs> bites rather than a big sit down meal because we just didn't see the value of spending a lot of money on that when we can have a lounge we're going to talk about lounges in a minute but just to give you an idea checking those menus is so easy you can literally go on the Walt Disney World website search for the restaurant you want and they have them listed obviously subject to changes and things can um, be unavailable on the day I mean that's obvious but some restaurants have a prefix menu for example so I really wanted to do California Grill uh, which is are meant to be a gorgeous restaurant in the contemporary resort but i didn't love the current uh, 50th anniversary prefix menu so i'm gonna wait and do that on our next trip when it's not that menu um because i'd rather go and have the best experience with the food that i know i'm gonna love the most so that's why checking the menus is super important. Like I said, I mentioned a lounge. You can try a lounge over a main restaurant and this can come with a bit of experience knowing which restaurants actually have lounges. But like I said, Space 220 is one that you can book in advance at your 60 day dining day and you can book the main or the lounge and they are together in the same area. So you get the same experience. It's just a different menu. And this also applied when I was looking at Tiffin's, which is a beautiful restaurant in Animal Kingdom. I know that they have a lounge, Nomad Lounge, which is attached to it. It is, again, a slightly different menu, but Nomad Lounge you can't book in advance. So some lounges you can, like Space 220. I'm not sure if there are many others, but others 
a lounge might be a better option for you if you didn't secure a big reservation you can walk up on the day they do currently have um some walk up wait lists but a lounge is a good option if you like i said didn't manage to secure something you still want the experience or you just don't eat an awful lot like something that people always overlook when they're booking their disney dining is how much food <laughs> there is meals are really big in the u.s especially in the theme parks you can definitely share portions and they can be obviously like i said really expensive so those lounges give you the option to have a smaller meal and if it's really hot we're going in december so the temperature will be lighter but in the summertime in the summer months especially between april may right up until october now it's still very warm and i lose my appetite sometimes and i don't always want a big meal so keep that in mind a lounge could be a really good option for you instead um so do your research around what you might like in that respect don't forget the restaurants that are outside of the parks so lots of people always look at what's available in animal kingdom magic kingdom epcot and hollywood studios and that's all well and good especially if you're doing a park day you want a restaurant really close but don't underestimate how amazing some of the restaurants are so close just outside of the parks in the resorts we are doing ohana for dinner which is super popular at disney's polynesian resort which is right by magic kingdom so i've managed to do a day where we go into magic kingdom and then we come out and we can go to the polynesian we can just take the monorail or the boat there and i really love that experience it breaks up the park day it can be really long really tiring and on your feet and actually i do think it's nice to come out and go to some of those restaurants i've heard that sebastian's bistro is really great at caribbean beach for example and obviously like i said the contemporary has uh, california grill it's got steakhouse 71 it's got chef mickey's there are so many choices for you when it comes to dining at the hotels and you don't have to be a hotel guest to eat at the restaurants as long as you have a reservation so don't miss looking at those restaurants outside of the main four parks now you've decided which restaurants you want which meals are important to you you need to make a list and not just any list this one needs to be in an order of priority not the order in which you're going to do the meals which is what i used to do and that used to be fine but if you want to be more savvy book them in order of which ones are harder to snag so this does come with a bit of experience um, but in terms of us we had ohana as our number one topolino's terrace for breakfast um then space 220 and then the rest of them were close to the bottom like homecoming Tepanido and Steakhouse 71 so they're all quite hard to snag um but that was the order in which we booked them so I immediately got Ohana first that was my number one you have to decide which one is like the most important to you I was happy if we only got one or two the fact we got them all was just a miracle I actually got five we did five and then Steakhouse 71 I did the next day because I was umming and ahhing it but yes you're going to want to write your list in order of which ones are harder to get another little tip here is to also write down a backup day and time so that when you go to book if they don't have your immediate day or time available you can chill knowing that you've got a second option ready to go it really helped me and we did use this method of having another option so i looked at our plan and i wrote down another day another time that we could also do this tip is one that should definitely not be overlooked but it's to practice the night before so familiarize yourself with the website where you need to go log into your account see which buttons you need to press and get the main website up now you can book via the app on your phone and you can also call Disney and speak to somebody. I believe if you the phone lines open an hour after the website and app opens and I personally didn't love the app. I had a little look at how easy it was and I just didn't like that I couldn't filter very easily and everything was very fiddly to me. So I knew the website was definitely the better option. So I Look, had a little look and I could see that there was like a filter section on the far right so it let you select the area so I knew I wanted Topolino's Terrace which is at the Riviera Hotel and I just clicked Disney's Riviera Resort and then that 
just eliminated the only restaurants that are available there instead of me scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of restaurants and by doing this little practice run before I was able to familiarize myself with the pictures that the restaurant was associated to and the full name so I just had homecoming written down for everything and then I realized it was called Chef Art Smith's Homecoming so it was under C so when I was looking at Disney Springs I knew what I was looking for rather than going straight to H I knew I needed C for Chef Artsmiths. So that's why it's so important to sort of familiarize yourself and just build your confidence in what you're going to book. Double check the time that the restaurant reservation window opens. Some of my friends told me that they had reservations dropping anywhere between half nine and 10.45, but the official time that they opened was 11 a.m. BST. So I'm in the UK, British summertime, which is 6 a.m. EST. And this can obviously change. I don't know when the clocks change, if that's gonna change things, but for me, it was 11 a.m. and also for me they all dropped absolutely bang on the dot 11 o'clock I didn't have any pop-up earlier I had read some uh, websites that say sometimes they start releasing them uh, 15 minutes before I was there and I was ready but that didn't happen for me I've also heard that sometimes it can crash and um, they can have error messages come up and things like that so maybe have your phone or an iPad or like another computer or whatever you can to hand uh, so that you can have the best <laughs> maximize the best opportunities for yourself but yeah Let's double check the timings for me it was 11 a.m on the dot divide and conquer if you can you can actually have two people on the same reservation booking at exactly the same time and this was a game changer i really don't think we would have been able to have got all five on the day we had six in the end but like i said five reservations between 11 and 1109 i think we got them all in the end so it took about 10 minutes but we did have some technical issues and glitches here and there, but Benji took two restaurants, my fiance, and I took three. So by delegating him two of them, it took the pressure and stress off of me, but also it meant that he could go and get specific days and times. And weirdly, we were actually not even in the same house. I was at the airport in a Hilton hotel, um, about to go and check in for a flight. So I was at my computer and he was here at home and he did it on his laptop. And yeah, it's a, it's a game game changer if you can have two people doing it then do it because it maximizes your chances you've got two people at the same time I really don't think we would have been able to have got everything if Benj hadn't have also got the ones he did and I was so chuffed and proud of him because he didn't have a clue but he did a good job so that was a brilliant tip we also had a few tabs open so the actual main dining like link we had it up a few times so I had filtered for Epcot uh, Riviera Resort and wherever the other one was that I was trying to snag and I had them all ready and then um, on the day I changed the day and time and like got it all ready and then I basically refreshed it and I could search quickly so that when one was loading I could then quickly search for another one. I did my very best to be as speedy as possible but I don't know how helpful it was having lots of tabs. I did get myself a little bit overwhelmed but it's an option, it's an idea have a few tabs open. My next tip is to be flexible with your times. We all know that most people are gonna be looking to book their reservations for dinner between five and 7 p.m. They are prime time for people. However, some restaurants like Ohana, the later reservations are like eight, nine o'clock, could also be really hard because people want fireworks view from their meal not guaranteed by the way but you can see the fireworks from the restaurant so try and be as flexible as you can i was prepared to take space 220 at 11 a.m or 3 p.m on a park day it's not overly that important like when you eat because you can snack easily and you're on the go and things change all the time um but keep it in mind even things like Topolino's Terrace I was really wanting breakfast and I knew that with jet lag on our first day we'd be up really early anyway so I knew in my head I was happy to take anywhere from like 7 8 a.m like an early reservation so try and be flexible and consider that but also when you're booking you'll see that it'll give you the day and the time and it'll also give you the option to just click breakfast brunch lunch and dinner and that's sort of like a pre-done time frame but some of my friends told me that they clicked dinner and then a five o'clock reservation wasn't popping up but then they changed it to 5 p.m and then it came up so maybe keep that in mind that clicking those uh, pre-written words over these specific times may not show all the options so i think it's better to actually click the hour 
time you want and it will show you a window of like an hour either side of that time which is really helpful it's very easy actually it will come up and it will say the restaurant it will say the times so you know you can easily navigate around everything but just keep in mind that you should try and be flexible if you are really invested in wanting a specific restaurant this tip absolutely changed the game for us and it's to book your hardest reservations at the end of your trip so not as applicable if you're having to book day per day if you're an off-site guest but if you're on site this is a game changer so i tried to search for topolino's terrace like i said on the first day of our trip absolutely no luck but then i changed it to the second week uh, like seven days later and they had loads of times coming up and I do think that this is obviously because all the people that were going out earlier than me have had that chance and booked those dates so I ended up switching and doing a lot of our reservations to the second half of the trip you definitely have a better chance of getting them later in the trip that is, this is a tip that I would say if you only do one thing look at your schedule and put those harder ones at the end <laughs> just do them last okay um but obviously keep in mind your 10 days on the day you book and if you don't get the ones you wanted then you can obviously click per day um after your 60 days have your card details to hand but not just the last three digits have all your card details and be prepared that it will have like a little drop down menu because it will say like disney gift card disney visa and then it'll have like all the different card types and for us in the past i only had to put in my last three digits because i've got a few cards including a credit card a debit card um, all saved on my disney account and i remember last time i did this i just had to use one of my saved cards and add my last three digits but for this time round it did not let us do that we had to complete the whole thing um for each of our reservations now some reservations you have to prepay for if they're an experience like hoop de doo musical review you have to pay for that fully in advance but i would say most of your dining reservations you don't have to pay anything it just takes your card details as a reserve in case you don't show up and then it will charge you a no-show fee so you don't have to actually pay anything unless you're booking like a pre-fixed experience not to be too confused um however uh what i didn't realize is that we'd need all the card details so i was feeling very smug gave Benji my last three digits of my card and he was on the phone to me and he said oh my gosh Brogan it's making me put all my card details in so I was like just put your card in it just needs a card so he ended up doing all his details and I did mine on mine but it did set us back a few minutes precious minutes that we could have been getting better times if we needed or wanted them so keep that in mind you're going to want your cards to hand don't forget your park pass reservations this is a system that Disney still have in place where you need to book a free park pass i honestly think it's ridiculous i don't like this at all but it's part of the system and um you just have to do it so this is why having a schedule is so important so you know where you're going don't worry if you didn't get what you wanted people cancel and change all the time you will probably find that there'll be reservations coming up all the time right up to the lead up of your trip and whilst you're there so don't stress if you didn't get something you can always walk up to a restaurant on the day there's no harm in asking and finding out but obviously if you can get those reservations in advance that will just save you all of that stress and worry i didn't book steakhouse 71 on the day on the 60 day mark and then the next day i checked and i was umming and ahhing it and i decided that i quite wanted to go for breakfast after i looked at the menu so i found a reservation the next day there was literally one on a day i wanted so i took it but people do change and cancel all the time so don't worry you can still have an amazing experience you don't have to do loads of sit down meals to really enjoy your time in walt disney world so not only can you walk up to a restaurant you can keep checking all that jazz there is actually a few websites and companies that offer alert services so you can set up an alert and it will email you when a reservation becomes available now i was recommended three there was actually a lot more but three that stood out the most when i was looking in disney facebook groups and they are mouse watcher mouse dining and stakeout stakeout is an app that let me have one 
reservation or uh, because these sort of services do charge a like a monthly fee or a yearly fee but mouse dining let me have six reservations set up for free so i didn't end up needing to use this but i did set it up anyway just to show you and this is an example of what it, it emailed me um for homecoming it told me there was like some 8 p.m's available i did get this email in the middle of the night but i just wanted to show you that it is possible you can still get some reservations using an alert service they exist they're there if you want them i'll leave some below i've got no affiliation with them and no real experience however when i was reading reviews and people in these facebook groups there were lots of people that were sharing success stories of how they managed to get some really hard restaurants just because they had an alert set up which is genius so um i just thought i'd pass it on as a little tip for you i was also just going to touch on mobile and walk up wait lists so you don't have to book your quick service restaurants however when i was there in may there were some restaurants that were taking mobile orders and you had to wait. For example, so Chili Canteen in Animal Kingdom, I put in my mobile dining, I think an hour before, and I had a window of when I could come back to collect it. And this restaurant got really popular really quick and I can imagine it gets really busy. So keep that in mind. If you have somewhere, like you're going to Animal Kingdom for the day and you wanna eat somewhere, just have a little look and keep checking it to see if there is a long mobile wait list or something like Nomad Lounge, like I mentioned earlier, has got a wait list. Uh, so has Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs, if you want cookies, by the way, wait list. Join it immediately. The minute you get there, just join the wait list. If I was going to Animal Kingdom for the day, I think we may do this. Go straight to Nomad Lounge and join the virtual queue. Um, so those are happening a lot at the moment with the rise of things becoming more popular and the parts becoming busier keep in mind that you might have to mobile and waitlist some things but most of the time you can quick service most places and don't forget your mobile order because honestly it's a game changer for skipping queues uh the amount of things i mobile ordered and didn't have to wait in the queue was just amazing so they were all my best tips and advice but i just wanted to run you through some of my personal favorites if you're thinking about what restaurants you want to go to like i said we don't have kids so your experience might be very different if you're booking for your family if you have a big group if you're a bunch of friends you know your priorities might be very different and i've tried lots of restaurants and something i will say that i wanted to add is i've been very lucky to go uh to lots of fancier restaurants not only on a dining plan but also disney took me to some really lovely restaurants uh when we were out there so i've done things like citricos flying fish i also did uh, chef de france in the french pavilion but i will say that all of these restaurants were very overwhelming to me not everything was to my palate and i i found a lot of it too fancy like i do think there is a point where unless you're doing a really lovely anniversary meal you're staying in that hotel and that's the kind of food you like eating you are still in a theme park and lots of these restaurants to me have just been too much there was one day in particular we were eating at chef de france and i didn't know what to order on the menu because everything was so heavy and it was so hot outside and i just personally just didn't think i would eat there again um i ended up having a french onion soup and it was delicious and a lovely cocktail but a lot of vloggers and people that give tips are going to say these are the best victoria and albert's california grill la 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 but if it's not for you and your palate and your taste then it won't work but i wanted you to keep that in mind and with that i still wanted to share some of my personal favorites that i just have really loved obviously i've not even touched the surface when it comes to dining i've not been that many times in my adult life i think this will be my fourth trip but i've done enough that i feel confident in sharing some of my favorites so in terms of characters i really love um tusker house breakfast for a character meal well, i've been twice and i do prefer it when it's a buffet because it has been family style recently where they bring the food to the table but either way both times have been great the animals are in their safari gear i just think it's really good but for breakfast and really good tip is that if you get an early reservation you can actually go into the park earlier before everyone else and you can get some beautiful photos of the tree of life you can also do this for crystal palace breakfast if you book an early one you can get uh castle photos with hardly anyone in it which is just a game changer like i just think that's one of the best tips ever and crystal palace is a beautiful winnie the pooh character breakfast too and i think both of them are brilliant especially for that reason of being able to get those photos just 
game changer. <laughs> on my list for future is Garden Grill. I've heard that's really great in Epcot with a sort of rotating restaurant. And I also have Topolino's Terrace. Obviously, I've talked about that a lot there in there um artist painting gear uh i love it it looks really great the menu looks amazing so i'm looking forward to sharing that with you and i briefly talked about a uh, storybook dining artist point that's the snow white characters and that's very very popular for characters so i just thought i'd mention that one too i did write down um do it once those one and done have to do it even just for the venue and the experience of going into the restaurant and for me I've got three. Cinderella's Royal Table, because who doesn't want to eat inside the castle? The food here can be hit and miss, but getting dressed up, meeting Cinderella, and having your meal inside the castle is special. So that was a win for me. I also love Be Our Guest. I've eaten there twice and I've done breakfast, but I was on a dining plan at the time. I do think it's very expensive, but I do love the experience of going in there and eating a meal in there. It's just really noisy in there though. It does feel very canteen fast food rather than like a lovely sit down meal so maybe keep that in mind um and it's very expensive and it's hard to get a reservation <laughs> i also wrote down sci-fi dining theater i really liked it here we had a good cocktail and a good meal you sit inside a car and they play old movies and i just thought it was quite nice i just didn't think it was anything wowy that we wouldn't do it again it was definitely do it for the experience especially if you had kids i think it's quite novelty and nice so i thought that was really worth it and then I wrote down a few that were good for the experience. So Ogre's Cantina, if you're a Star Wars fan, this is a no-brainer. You're going to want to go inside here and just see it and experience it. It's so cool. The attention to detail is incredible. Tepan Edo, we have uh, booked for this trip. And I really love the experience of them cooking in front of you on one of those sort of hot not hot plate but you know when they have um like japanese it's in, it's in the japan pavilion japanese style cooking on a big stove thing um but they really make it a show and i just think it's really great and the food here is great so i'm taking Benj to do that because i think it's worth it i also thought that hoop de doo musical review is one that you have to look at it's at Fort Wilderness. It's a show, a dinner show. So you eat your meal and they put on a show on the stage and it's really interactive. It's hilarious. It's so fun. I would do it every trip if I could, but I really do want to spend my money on some other meals this time. But if you haven't done Hoobdy Do musical review, please look at it because it's incredible. And um, I just, I love it. Absolutely love it. And we always get a little tiddly because they have um, free flowing alcohol. <laughs> It's great and also on the list we have space 220 just for the experience of going up into the restaurant it's meant to be all like you're meant to feel like you're going in a spaceship into space and it's meant to be very cool so i'll vlog and share that all with you and let you know if it was worth it for the experience and the food and what the lounge was like and last but not least i also wrote down some special occasion meals obviously like i said california grill is on our list but i didn't like the prefix menu right now and my favorite restaurant one of my favorites is le cellier in the canadian pavilion in epcot we had the most incredible meal here the steak obviously and the cheddar cheese soup oh just just divine uh, I loved getting all dressed up for this and really making a nice date night of it and having a bottle of wine it was lovely and I know that you've obviously got Steakhouse 71 now and Yachtsman Steakhouse so there are a few steak restaurants that are also very popular if you do like a steak dinner it's just a pricey meal and obviously like I said I'm doing other things that is everything when it comes to dining oh my gosh so many tips let me know if any of this has helped you what did you learn what are your favorite restaurants like I said and your countdowns please please comment below. I love chatting to you. Like I said, if you're not subscribed already, you got this far, please do hit subscribe. I'd love for you to join us here and we'll be heading out to Walt Disney World very, very soon. I can't believe it. Once the 60 day passes, then you know you're like, you're close. You're so close. So yeah, so exciting. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.